Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, with great appreciation, I want to thank our three sponsors for Saturday night, William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports. And we'll be underway with the official press conference in just one moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the heavyweight championship of the world, the greatest title in all of sports. And that will be on the line Saturday night here in Cardiff at Principality Stadium. And it's all brought to you by Mr. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing. It'll be broadcast live on Sky Sports Box Office. And to our friends in the United States, it's showtime. So without further ado, here to tell you all about the fantastic undercard and the main event is Mr. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing. Thank you, Michael. Always a pleasure to have you in town and thanks everyone for showing up today. Incredible turnout from the world's media ahead of the biggest star in world boxing, Anthony Joshua. Remarkably, the fourth defense of his world heavyweight title and this time defending new belts as well against mandatory challenger Carlos Takam in front of 78,000 people at the Principality <coughs> Stadium. I think we've never seen anything like this in British boxing before and we may never see anything like this again. Even at the open workout last night, this young man has transcended the sport of boxing, still remaining disciplined, humble and hungry to be number one, to defend these belts and ultimately win on Saturday night. We can't thank enough our sponsors as well, our broadcasters, of course, Sky Sports Box Office and Sky Sports who have backed Anthony Joshua from his debut many years ago at the O2 Arena now. Also, our international partners, Showtime Boxing, our friends in France, SFR and RTL in Germany, so many to mention. This fight will be broadcast in over 160 countries worldwide. Thank you, of course, to Anthony's team and Rob McCracken, AJ Boxing, Freddie Cunningham, Andy Bell, everyone doing a great job to make these events spectacular, to make these real shows where we can create iconic images that will be seen for many, many years to come. Right now, I'm going to pass over to the head of Sky Sports, Adam Smith, to say a few words and talk to the fighters. It's wonderful being back in Wales 24 years after Lennox Lewis's uh, battle with Frank Bruno. Some memories there. This is a new era. Is this the AJ era after that epic night at Wembley in April? The road to this uh, world heavyweight title defence has been uh, tricky. But in her step, the experienced, fit and highly rated Carlos Takam. Answering the call at just 12 days notice. What a wonderful opportunity for him. And a 78,000 sellout for AJ to perform in. Let's get straight to the fighters. Anthony, how excited are you? First of all, to be back in Cardiff. I know you fought here in your fourth fight. And also to be back in the ring after that thriller at Wembley. Cardiff is good. Cardiff's looking really good. It was a great turnout at the workout yesterday. And to be fighting again, it's all I do. It's all I know. And uh, it's an honour to be defending these belts, of course. I don't always like to talk about the belts because I've always been a fighter before that. And I've always had the ambition of being a talented fighter before I became champion. So me as a person, I'm just looking forward to getting in the ring and handling business. I know you like to keep yourself real, stay hungry and humble, but how much of a privilege is it to be the world heavyweight champion and how has that changed your mentality? I think the privilege is like, it, I'm around like um, hungry athletes as well, so it gives them an opportunity to kind of see the benefits that come with being a champion and it keeps them motivated. So I'm just like a reflection of hard work because you know the UK boxing scene is quite grassroots. So um, I still go to my amateur club just before this championship fight. I was training with all the amateurs, like kids that are like 10 years old. And you can only achieve what you see. So when they're training with like um, Olympians and professional world champions, they're inspired. So um, that's, that's real nice to be in a champion. I still keep it real and I still train with the grassroots athletes. And overcoming Vladimir Klitschko in those 11 rounds, which obviously taught you a lot about yourself as well. How do you reflect on that as you go into the ring again? Uh, we're going to have to put that Klitschko win to the side at some stage. You know where I'm coming from? Because boxing's unforgiving. That was that. This is now. 
So, I don't know. Carlos is a completely different animal to Klitschko. But I do know that, you know, I'm willing to kind of do this and do that and do whatever it takes to, to win. That's what I do know. But in terms of style, technique and preparation, it's completely different. Every camp is completely different. And my mindset's completely different. And Carlos is a completely different fight. So all will be revealed Saturday, right? You know, and um, best of luck to both men. And uh, the best man will win. You were preparing, of course, long and hard for Kubrat Pulev, a totally yeah. different style of fighter. Correct. First time in your career that you've, you've had this sort of change. Yeah. Have you and Robert adapted to that? I always say, like, Rob helped me because when I first um, turned professional, what was, I was doing about six rounders, and then Rob would be training me, like, 18 rounds in the gym, and I'd be thinking, I don't know if this pro boxing is for me, man. I just come from doing three-round fights, and now I'm doing 18 round, uh, rounds in the gym and so on. But what I'm trying to say is that he's never just trained me for one style of opponent. Do you know what I mean? He's trained me to be the best me. So whether I was fighting Pulev, whether I was fighting King Kong, or whether I was fighting Carlos Takam, he's trained me to be ready, to be fit, to be focused, and to adapt new, st new skills of boxing, balance, feet work, hand positioning. He's taught me all these things. So um, when I heard the news, um, Carlos is strong, Carlos is fit, Carlos can box. So I just knew that I was going to be facing someone who's ready and I'm just so happy that I wasn't just training for Pulev. Rob's always trained me to focus on myself. So no matter who it is, I'll always be in good condition to compete against any champion or any contender in the world. You got the news 12 days out, so did Carlos Takam. Let's bring you in, Carlos. How excited are you about this, um, I guess, sort of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with such a short space, 12 days to get your mind around Anthony Joshua? How excited are you about Saturday night? Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, I, uh, I speak French, huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> euh, merci beaucoup. Euh, C'est vrai que le match a été. Euh, on m'a annoncé le, le combat un peu très. Les délais étaient un peu très courts. Mais j'étais déjà en préparation pour un autre match. Donc j'ai dû accélérer un peu ma préparation pour. Pour, comment dire. Pour modifier euh, ma façon de boxer contre Anthony. Donc. <coughs> Je vais dire aujourd'hui que depuis le jour de l'annonce jusqu'à jusqu maintenant, je me sens prêt pour ce match. Et le 28, je suis venu pour gagner. Hey, thank you very much to give me this opportunity. Um, I heard about the fight in a very short notice, as you know. When I heard about the fight, I was already in preparation for another fight. So I do change uh, completely uh, my way to train to be ready for this fight uh, on the 28th and I'm coming out on the 28th to win the fight. You have obviously looked at Anthony Joshua for quite a while now. I know you met him after the Brazil fight and, and you said, why not? I, c come and fight me now. So you, you have actually been preparing for the possibility of fighting Joshua for a long time. What weaknesses do you see in him? Oui, tu as euh, déjà euh, une occasion donnée de regarder Anthony et euh, tu étais prêt à lui dire euh, viens euh, pour euh, le combat. Euh, comment est-ce que tu appréhendes ce combat, ce moment que tu as l'opportunité de pouvoir le faire Oui, tu sais comment. C'est vrai que j'avais déjà eu à, à rencontrer Anthony et que je l'avais dit, euh, oui, euh, on devrait boxer. Il m'a regardé droit, droit dans les yeux, il m'a dit, oui, on, on devrait boxer. Et comment on dit, j'étais euh, c'est sûr qu'on devrait boxer, mais pas dans ce genre, de, pas dans ce contexte. Ça, c'est sûr que j'attendais le boxer, mais pas dans ce contexte. Donc voilà, je prends euh, je prends le combat comme c'est et et je ne comment on dit euh, <laughs> je, me, je me suis préparé pour ça et je suis prêt pour le match dont je n'appréhende pas. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I met Anthony on an occasion and I do tell him uh, we're going to have a fight. And uh, at that time, he looked at me in my eyes and said, Yes, we're going to do it. 
<laughs> but I didn't apprehend it at that time in this context. But uh, the occasion is here. I'm ready. And uh, we're going to give it up. You're aggressive. You come forward. You can punch. Have you got the style to beat Anthony Joshua? Tu as un style agressif, tu vas vers l'avant en boursant. Euh, Est-ce que tu, tu penses que ce style te permettra de battre Anthony bon, Il me pose cette question, on aurait dit qu'il doute de mon style. Alors je l'invite le 28 pour venir voir ce que ça va donner. Uh, yeah, the question to him same, you have a doubt on his uh, potentiality. Or uh, I can say, it, I invite you on the 28 to see the outcome of the fight. Okay, finally, Carlos, you seem happy, relaxed. When we came and saw you in Paris last week, it was, um, it was, it was a very, very chilled Carlos Takam. Are you just, you're seeing this as another job, that this is Saturday night, and on Sunday, win or lose, you go back to, to your, your life in Paris, or do you think this will change your world? Uh, yeah, on t'a vu hier, uh, tu étais dans ton élément, uh, comme d'habitude. Uh, Est-ce que tu vas prendre ce combat comme un autre combat, comme tu as l'habitude de, de le faire, ou alors tu penses que ce combat changera ta vie dans une moindre mesure Bon, c'est vrai que c'est un gros match. Je ne vais pas dire ça va changer ma vie. Ça va changer ma vie de sportif, mais pas ma vie euh, normale. Donc, comme il a dit, je suis toujours comme ça, toujours souriant et tout, mais ça n'empêche que je suis resté concentré au maximum pour ce match. Yes, I know it's going to be a great fight. Uh, this will change my life, of course, but just in the box, not uh, personally, uh, from the person I am. And what's your prediction for the fight? Quel est ton pronostic pour ce combat? Ben, je vais gagner, bien évidemment. Uh, of course, I'm coming out to win on the 28. Anthony, obviously, you're coming out to win, you're coming out to defend those titles. Do you think stylistically it's going to be a more enticing fight with the two of you than it would have been with Pulev? Probably because, I don't know if you lot have got some footage of me and my cousin. I've got a cousin, Benga, I don't know where he is in here. Um, and I spar Benga, he's just like Takam's build. Um, and I've got many like friends just like Takam. So, and I like to, to spar and, and I, fought, I fought a lot of people like his style. And, um, I think our styles will definitely create some real good fireworks, so I'm looking forward to it for sure. Robert, can we just bring you in a moment? What about the late change for you? Um, you're meticulous the way you go about preparing uh, your charges for battle. 12 days out, a very, very different uh, proposition. How did it affect things? Um, it wasn't ideal. Uh, when, when I spoke to Eddie, it wasn't ideal because we'd trained for the best part of three months for Kubra at Pulev. Um, but I think, without a doubt, um, he's a live opponent, he's, he's, he's a dangerous opponent. I watched him attack him against Povetkin and obviously in the Joseph Parker fights. Uh, very competitive, very difficult to beat. And the main thing is, is the fans will be the winners because um, Pulev very experienced, very cagey technically. And I think, you know, until Anthony caught him, it would have been a, a cagey affair. I think it was, it's a different fight with Carlos Takam. I think he's coming in. He's going to come in and give it 100%. He's going to believe in himself and he's going to go for it. And the fans will be the wheel runners on Saturday. I think you'll see a spe spectacular fight and I, th I, see, I think you'll see a great performance from AJ. You say it's a real chance he's going to go for it. I just want to align with Christian Kirky, the, the promoter, the Italians. It's great to have you guys with us. Um, we spoke in Paris last week and you said these opportunities just don't come around. You've got to grab it with both hands and you believe that there could be an upset here on the cards. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Of course, there, there could be an upset because we are talking about heavyweight boxing. So... They are over 100 kilos both, so a punch can change the, the way of the fight. Joshua knows about this. He came back in a great way, in a great fight. So what I hope will be another great fight for the people and uh, for the fighter themselves. And how much do you believe in your man, Carlos Takam, that he can do something 
really surprising in this sport. We've seen heavyweight boxing, the twists and turns in the past, the bone crusher Smiths coming in at late notice, Lennox Lewis taking maybe his eyes off the prize a couple of times. Do you really believe that Carlos Takam can become world heavyweight champion Saturday night? You know, sometimes uh, late notice means uh, less pressure. So Anthony is the favorite to win. So the pressure is on him to deliver the win. But Carlos has great chance. We all believe he has chance to do to win the fight. And we generally believe it's not like we come in for only for the opportunity. We come to win. They're coming to win. You've got the pressure on yeah. your shoulders. But then I'm, I'm like, I always say to you, right? That's why I said the belts isn't always just a representation of me. I'm like a challenger in my mind. It's not just like this brings an ego and I'm now the big I am. I keep my feet on the ground still and I'm um, just still grinding and just still hungry. And as I said, it's like, like even the belts get taken out of the ring after. I can't fight with the belts on my shoulder and he respects me because of these. He has to respect me because of my fighting style. And, um, and that's why Rob said as well and everyone's saying that, I think the fans are always going to be um, winners in this division now because you've got hungry guys that are coming. As he said, as he said, it's not about his personal life. He wants to perform in the ring. And that's the same with me. It's not about anything in my personal life. It's just I want to put on a good show and have a good fight. But personally, you seem to have a real connection with the fans. We saw at the workout yesterday, the, the scenes were incredible. And, and after you finished, you went and spent a, a good deal of time with them. You enjoy that, don't you? Yeah, because I, I just, I know, I used to go to all the, the, the boxing shows when I was an amateur. And I would be asking for a pitch and the guys would be like, get, get out of the way. <laughs> you, know, <I'd> thinking, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you wanted, you wanted a bit of interaction with your, your, your role models or whatever you want to call them. And um, now I see people have come out to just spend five minutes with you. It doesn't, it doesn't take me more than an hour to kind of make someone's whole day. So I always remember that. And that's why I just give them a little bit of my time as much as I can. I've got to think of myself because I've got a fight coming up, so I've got to rest and stuff. But other than that, um, I spoke to Rob. I said, Rob, can I quickly go? He said, yeah, go on. <laughs> Just don't be too long. And, um, yeah, I'll spend as much time as possible. And finally, fight fans out there clambering, of course, for the likes of Deontay Wilder, Joseph Parker, maybe Tyson Fury. But Carlos Takam's in front of you yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah. night. There's 78,000 there. It's business, isn't it, first? Yeah, yeah. As you said, like, um, even though... Like you mentioned other champions, providing me and Carlos perform well, and obviously I have to walk out the winner, then we're both winners. That's it. We're both winners. Klitschko, he lost. He didn't become champion. He didn't become three-time heavyweight champion, but he walked out a winner. So right now, we're in the division and the business of providing really good fights. You know, not like We're not here to tip and tap and run for 12 rounds. We're here to get stuck in. And... Um, I think the, the reason why people can relate to boxing is because it's a labour and sport. You have to wake up early, work when you're tired, work when you're ill, stay away from your family. And I know a lot of people out there that are working day to day can relate to this. And that's what I say, like, this is what fighting's about and this is what we're going to produce. So yeah, let's rock and roll and thank you guys for promoting what we're doing to the world because it's something so close to what everyone does. We're labouring, we're just working and putting on good entertaining fights. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Adam, and thanks to all the fighters up here. 5 p.m., we go live on Saturday. Incredible undercard. I think some of Anthony's teammates and Rio Olympians come through the GB system. Joshua Boatsy, bronze medalist Joe Caldina, his first fight in Wales. Lawrence Acoli, the British light heavyweight championship between Frank Buglioni and Craig Richards. Three world championship fights on this card. Of course, Anthony against Takam. Katie Taylor, the huge star of Irish and world boxing, going for her first world title on Saturday night. Cal Fire, I believe the number one super flyweight in an incredible division, defending his title against mandatory challenger Shoashida. And Dillian White against Robert Hellanius for essentially the number one spot in the WBC division. It's a stacked show. And we thank you all for coming from around the world for your support, for this incredible showcase, these incredible events, like I believe we had just have not seen before. On Saturday night, you're in for a huge treat. Again, thanks to our sponsors and, of course, Sky Sports and Showtime Boxing as well. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you Saturday night. We're going to have a head-to-head -to, -head to the front and both guys available for you. Thank you. Just